Welcome to the first video on the series, uh, What is Confidence? I started out super shy, super insecure. I couldn't really talk to people. I hardly left my house as a child. And when I graduated high school, this became a passion of mine, really developing confidence. And it's taken me on a long road and I've had a lot of teachers uh, because there's so many aspects to it. You see, a lot of people think that confidence is fake it till you make it, just go do it. But in actuality, I talked about this in, the, in another video, that actually makes the problem worse. I've had many clients over the years come to me after trying to fake it till they make it for many years, and they actually had more anxiety, more insecurity, and more shyness than when they started. I'll give you an example. Since we work a lot with guys that are working on dating, I've had clients come to me who have spent a lot of time working on their dating skills, going out and approaching every night. And what happens is they become more bitter and resentful towards women, towards the process, and they actually get more emotionally walled off. They get more disconnected emotionally, and, they get, and pretty soon their body does not want to go out and do it anymore. And so that's the real problem. They're not really building confidence. They're either learning to build a thick wall, so thick that they can't connect with women, they can't uh, get a date because women can't feel them, can't relate to them, and so they appear confident on the outside, but they're actually very insecure on the inside, or they become so pain-ridden because they feel so much, they just stop going out altogether. Me personally, I went out one, I mean, remember several times when I first started where I would go out and I would get state pump myself or push myself to approach a lot of women in one night. And what would happen is that in the end, I just didn't want to talk to them anymore. I, oh, excuse me, I said that wrong. I would approach a lot of women in one night and then the next weekend, I would actually have more fear than when I started. What is the reason for this? We're going to look at this first and then we're going to break down what confidence really is as you begin to understand this a little better. I learned this many years ago in a hypnosis school. And the pain pleasure principle is this idea that whatever causes you pain, you're gonna to try to push out of your life. And whatever causes you pleasure, you're gonna pull more of it into your life. Now this seems obvious, but I want you to think about it in another way. This doesn't matter whether you like or don't like, or whether what you want is good or bad for you, and neither does this one. Let's say you really don't want donuts in your life, but they cause you a lot of pleasure. You're gonna to try to get donuts in your life all the time. Let's say you really wanna to learn to approach women, but every time you go out, you create more pain and you don't resolve the pain, you don't grow from it. You gotta grow from the pain if you're, gonna, if you're gonna create more pain. Otherwise, the body will start trying to wall off and get rid of the pain and eventually you'll just give up. And that's really important to understand when building confidence in this area. Now, we all know women are really attracted to confidence. We all know women are, are very much drawn to confident men. Why is this? Let's take a deeper look at what confidence is now. And then through the rest of the videos, we're gonna talk about how to get past the pain pleasure principle and actually start to enjoy building your confidence. And that's what it's really about, making this process more fun. Even pain to some degree can be pleasurable. Think about it. Bodybuilders do it all the time. They love their ache when they're working out. They love pushing themselves. And that's what we wanna to get to. So let's take a deeper look at this. What is confidence? Well, first I'm gonna, I'm gonna break that down. What is confidence? Confidence is the ability to handle tension. It's the ability to manage, play with, and bring tension. What do I mean by that? Well, tension is essential in life. Tension causes growth. Bodybuilders have to stress their muscles to grow. When you go to school, you're stressing the brain to learn. When you have gravity on you 24 hours a day, yet we're taught over and over and over again to get stress out of your life. And stress is synonymous with tension here. So is responsibility. So think about it. You can insert responsibility, stress, different words for this. But tension is ultimately what's happening. And without that tension, you don't grow. When a caterpillar is turning into a butterfly, it goes into a cocoon and it, and it and it basically turns to goo and it's inside there under pressure, changing itself and building into the butterfly. It needs the cocoon to keep everything in together. There's a certain amount of tension and it's just the right amount of tension. And that's the key. What is the right amount of tension? So men that are really good with tension are the most attractive to women. And let's take a deeper look at this. And then there's a few caveats to it too that you, you have to learn so that you understand that it's not just 
blasting yourself into tension. You have to go a little deeper with the understanding. So men that are good with tension, let's go back uh, 10,000 years and somebody's living in a village and you've got a guy, the typical nice guy. He's trying to please everybody. And the typical nice guy likes to run from tension. He's nice to a fault. He's trying to make everybody happy all the time. And when there's any tension at all, he starts to freak out. He tries to reactively, we're going to talk about this later, deal with all the responsibility to get it done as fast as possible so everybody's happy. He wants to get rid of tension so there's no problem, so he doesn't get in trouble, he doesn't get yelled at, nothing bad happens to him. So at a core, a nice guy is dealing with that energy. I was an extreme nice guy. I know this from personal experience. Now, if you go to this village, picture three types of guys. One type of guy is an extreme nice guy, and he's gonna go out there and he's gonna try to meet women, or he's gonna go out there and he's gonna try to deal with the problems of the village. Let's, let's back it up a little bit, I'm jumping ahead. He's gonna try to deal with the problems of the village by being reactive and being nervous. In essence, he's trying to get through the tension as fast as humanly possible so that it's done with and everybody will thank him or everything will be good. And uh, you could picture that guy. Now picture you're, you're a woman and you've got to survive. Your genes want to survive. You've got to produce offspring. You want the offspring to be strong. You want them to be protect, protected. You want to be protected. Is that guy good for you? Is he good for your offspring? Is he good for your future development? This is not a logical thing to her. This is, an, this is her genes. This is a feeling-based thing. Now think of the next guy. He loves to run right into tension headlong. He pushes right in. If there's a fight, he's going to deal with it. If there's a problem, urgh, let's go do it. Let's go do it. And there's, like a, there's almost like a hunger or craving. And he doesn't think enough, though. And so this is the guy on the other extreme from the nice guy. And uh, he's going to be better with tension than the first guy. Probably more attractive in a lot of ways than the first guy. And then picture a third guy. This third guy can walk right into tension, but instead of pushing into tension or trying to get rid of it as fast as possible, he actually feels it fully. He's proactive, which we'll talk about later, to his relationship to the tension. He relaxes into it. Uh, he gets comfortable and he makes decisions with a clear head, but he's also not afraid of it. So if there's something to deal with, he'll walk right into it, stay clear headed, make decisions. This is the mark of a leader. And this is also the mark of somebody that's most attractive. This is somebody that's gonna end up high on the totem pole of attractiveness. And if you're on a sports team, this is gonna be the guy that a lot of the other sports players really respect. So think of Kobe Bryant. Kobe Bryant is a great example of this. He, you know, under stress, get him the ball. He's gonna handle it. All your action movies out there, all your top action movies where we really kind of want to be the character, we want to go out and do that, they're handling a lot of tension and they're doing it well. They're being present and conscious and they're making shit happen under pressure. That's what makes them attractive. The key here is relaxation. You want to bring, I'm gonna actually write that in a different color. You want to bring relaxation to the tension. You want to bring a sense of calm. This doesn't mean lazy, this doesn't mean weak, but just sense of calm. And that's what we have to develop, this sense of relaxation and calm energy in relation to the tension. And then you gotta realize that there's many types of tension. And, uh, and so there's emotional tension, there's physical tension. Like if you're in a special forces team and you gotta run up to the top of the hill and take that gun, that's a physical tension. Then there's emotional tension, running, uh, walking up to the bar and saying hi to this cute girl or, or really trying to dig into a deep problem you have in your relationship with your girlfriend or a friend. And then there's big tension and small tension. Small tension, cleaning up your room, the day-to-day -day tasks. Some people are terrible at that, but they're great with big tension. A car crash on the street is a great example of big tension. Run right into it, a burning building, a big, uh, a big problem with your family that like, like surprises everybody. Somebody's suddenly really ill and you show up. And these are all different types of tension. And some people are good at one, but not the other. So I wanna invite you to this idea that being calm and good at tension is really understanding how to develop these types of tension and how to develop these, these, these abilities with tension a little bit at a time. Because if you try to force it, if you try to push it, if you try to rush the growth, like the, the second guy I talked about in the example, the one that pushes right into the tension, it will actually eventually go backwards on you. You'll either wall off or you'll become worse and more reactive to the tension, more nice guy-like. So what is the key to really getting good with tension 
which is then going to equal your confidence so that you can build powerful emotional and physical confidence with small and big amounts of tension so that you can be well-rounded and very powerful. And in that way, over time, if you're willing to do the work, you're going to see your whole life change. And not only that, you're going to see the people around you start reacting to you differently, not just a little bit, but massively. I hope you understand now what really creates tension, you know, and that tension is synonymous with stress. Tension is synonymous with responsibility. That the most respected people in the world handle the most tension, the most stress, the most responsibility. And to them, it's easy. They've gotten so good at it, they relax and they're calm in it. And pretty soon what makes them cause stress or tension is a lot more than, make, than it takes for us to feel stress and tension. With that said, I hope you got a lot out of this video. And this is the first video in our series. The next video, uh, the first one's been What is Confidence? The next video is on the Confidence Journal. So I look forward to getting you started on your Confidence Journal, on your journey to becoming a very confident man. I'll see you in the next video.